Hey, how's it going, people? AJ Rage here. Mayhem in the morning with myself, AJ Rage, as part of Enter the Ring. Me and my brother, Mighty Mike, will be live later on today, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Pacific Time, live from Toyota Arena in Ontario, California, for the official weigh-in of the Jamel Charlo, Tony Harrison matchup. I want to talk briefly about that before uh, we go officially live later on today. Just a little bit of my take, you know, as one part of Into the Ring. Um, I think it's an interesting matchup. I think both Charlo and Harrison are bringing a lot of emotion into this bout. On Harrison's part, I believe he's bringing in the aspect that he wants to prove the legitimacy. He wants to validate his victory over Charlo. A lot of people felt it was very highly controversial, you know. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I hear, at least, that it was. Um, I went back and I've watched the fight several times. And, you know, I could see where a lot of people feel Charlo could have won based on his sheer aggression. But I think one of the things that really stuck out to me in viewing the fight was Jamel Charlo's inability to control the pace with accurate, precise punching. He missed a lot of punches. And Harrison made him pay for a lot of those misses. Um, so Charlo, you know, to me, he was a bit sloppy at times. He got caught. Uh, there was a few times, you know, that you could, I'm not going to say he was in distress where he was, you know, hurt. He did at, t- at times have Harrison reeling back and had Harrison on his, you know, on his heels. But, you know, Harrison never lost control. He never got wild. He never fell into that Jamel Charlo wild slugfest that Jamel Charlo was hoping was going to happen. So with that, I'll go over to Tony Harrison. Tony Harrison, to me, is the more polished fighter. He... You know, he has a, a good pedigree. He was a, a stellar amateur like Charlo himself. But I think the thing about Harrison is his patience and his control. For me, the key to victories for Tony Harrison, and then I'll go over to Charlo, is to come back into this fight, control the pace with his jab. Fight is a tall fighter. Jamel's a tall fighter too, but so is Harrison. Harrison is a big guy. Make her, Make Charlo pay. For those wild punches that he throws. Counter punching is a key. Use angles. Charlo's going to come, you know, he lunges in. And I'll tell you, another aspect that Harrison landed only a few times and it was successful was the uppercut. Uppercut followed up with a hook every time was money on Charlo. So he has to do that. He can't allow himself to fall into this emotional thing that Charlo's really experiencing right now. And I see it in Charlo's face. He has this very almost disturbing look when he looks at Tony Harrison which shows me Harrison's got under his skin, which is very astonishing to me because Harrison really hasn't talked a lot of trash. He's just basically, you know, try to defend himself as far as being the new champion. And, you know, he's thankful for this opportunity again, you know, and he's, he's looking forward to this fight. And I feel that he's very confident going into this fight. And it's almost like Charlo gets really upset if you don't fall in line with what he has to say. And that's unfortunate for Charlo because if he goes into this fight with a chip on his shoulder, and doesn't follow the game plan, and doesn't go in there and use the tools in which he possesses, and try to make Harrison make you know get be patient and hope Harrison makes that mistake so that he can capitalize. It can be a long night for Jamel Charlo, and the end result can be the same. And at this point in Charlo's career, this can be a devastating blow to Jamel Charlo and where he goes from now at 154. If Jamel wins this fight, you know he's going to reign supreme. At 154, there will be possible matchups out there with him. If he loses this fight, the prospects are going to be thin and in between as far as some of the upper echelon fighters. He falls into the more ordinary category. He'll still be the A side in most of the bouts that he fights. But I see Jamel becoming very frustrated and maybe using the excuse, well, you know, I'm struggling to make 154 and take the plunge into 160 like his brother Jamar, Jamal. So, it's an interesting fight for Jamel. You know, he's he's just got to be patient. Not too patient, but go in there and do the things that he does well. Because Harrison, to me, honestly, 
I know a lot of people are looking at Jamel's the, the favorite going into this fight, but I look at it like a 50-50 fight. Everybody knows that when a fighter becomes a champion, they get a little bit more of an edge. They become a little bit better. Except for Andy Reese, of course. That's a whole other story. But, um, you know, Harrison, to me, you know, he's got all the tools to beat Charlo. And if Harrison wins this fight and validates his victory over Charlo from the first time, that kind of erases all that controversy. And guess what? We got a, we got a really, really dominant champion at 154 that sets up some interesting matchups, possibly later down down the line trying to unify the title against people like Jacera, amongst others. So um, that's just kind of like my quick take, you know, on on, on that. And um, I think it's going to be a, a great um, day tomorrow. I believe there's 14 bouts scheduled. It's going to be at the uh, Toyota the arena, the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California. Um, there's some other interesting bouts that are going to be on there. And one of the ones that I'm really looking forward to seeing is a young, uprising lightweight in Carlos Balderas. Balderas is 9 0 currently with eight knockouts. He's a, he's kind of created this stigma, this, 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 this legendary status amongst the local gyms here in Southern California. This is a guy who's um, matched up against everybody. Um, he's 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 sparred against guys like Devin Haney. You go to YouTube, you can see what he did to Tiafimo Lopez. I mean, you know, if it would have been a real bout, a sanctioned bout. I mean, that bout could have possibly ended in the first round. So the thing is, I'm saying is, I keep your eye on Carlos Balderas. He's um he's an exciting young fighter at 23 years old. He's right there in the mix with guys like Tiafimo Lopez, Devin Haney. He hasn't got quite the shine that he deserves. But this could be a breakout fight for him. He's fighting against a um, a tough young fighter who's coming into the bout at 16 and one. So I mean, I, I'm I'm excited to see where he goes from here. His younger his brother Jose is also fighting on the card. I believe he's on a pending match in the beginning. Um, the bouts themselves are being thrown by TGB and Tom Brown, and it's gonna you know it's gonna be a great day of boxing. So if you're in the Southern California area, make it out to Toyota Arena, get your tickets, you know, and support boxing. It's going to be a, a lot of really good fights. And we'll be out there if you see us. You know, me and Mighty Mike, you know, we'll have our shirts on. Enter the ring. Come up and say hi to us. We'd love to get you on the air. Um, but uh, with that said, I want to tell everybody, um, have a wonderful day. And we'll shoot out some information later on. Go to our official website at entertheringbuzz That's entertheringbuzz dot b u double z. Hit us up on Facebook at Enter the Ring Show. Or follow us on Twitter. Our official Twitter is Ring Enter. If you have something that you'd like to shoot us, a segment that you'd like us to talk about, or a certain fighter, hit us up at info at enterthering.buzz. And we'll see you again, like I said, later on today. And tomorrow, we'll be covering the fight round by round. Jamel Charlo, Tony Harrison, the rematch. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll see you later on today. Bye-bye.